Welcome back to another video in my Fusion 360 form modeling series and today we'll be learning about box modeling and edge modeling. These two different modeling approaches can be used to achieve the same result. They can also be combined and used together. Either way it's great to know the differences between each and how to use them. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and what we'll do again is go ahead and create a form. So if you remember in the last video what we did was play around with some of these predefined shapes like the box or the cylinder. But what we're actually gonna to do today is create a plane. So if we click on that, we'll place the plane on the floor. And I'm just gonna use the center point as a reference. I'm gonna make this 50 mil by 50 mil. Don't hit enter, what you wanna do is click. And what that'll do is it'll bring up another menu here on the right. And you wanna select the length and width faces to be one. I've set it to be one here just for simplicity. But obviously if you wanted more resolution you could set this to be say 10 by 10 and it'll give you a whole bunch of those faces. I'm going to leave that at 1 again for simplicity for this tutorial. So let's hit OK. So you can see here now we're left with a plane that is simply one face and this is what we refer to as a T-spline. So now that you have this plane here you might be thinking well that's kind of boring right? In the last video we had all these cool shapes and we were manipulating them and now we're just left with this single plane. But I assure you this is way more exciting because this is where it all starts and when I was learning this stuff it was at this point that I kind of realized wow you know you, you really can create whatever shapes you want in this workspace and I think you'll see that in this video. So first of all I'll show you box modeling. So if we click on the plane and come up here to edit form you'll see that we have the exact same tools that you saw in the previous video. But this time, rather than just click and drag to manipulate the shape, what we're actually gonna do is hold down the Alt key and then drag our shape. So if I hold the Alt key and drag the up arrow upwards, so I've dragged this one up 50 millimeters and you can see here that it's created some kind of form for us already. We refer to this as box modeling because we can keep expanding this out almost like adding chunks or blocks to your model until you get the desired shape that you want. So again, if I hold Alt and drag upwards once again, you can see that we've now added another block to our model. And I'm gonna leave that one there for now. And now I'm gonna select a different face. So I'm gonna click on this face here. Once again, hold down Alt. And this time we're gonna drag outwards. I'm just gonna drag outwards 50 millimeters. I'm gonna do the same on this face. I'm gonna hold Alt and drag outwards, 50 millimeters. And if you actually let go of Alt, you can do exactly what we did in the previous video, right? So if I wanna drag that up now, I can still do that. If I wanna rotate it or scale it, I can still do that. I'm gonna leave it at 50. I'm gonna once again select this face, hold down Alt. I'm gonna pull that out, 50 millimeters. I'm gonna do the same here. So hold Alt and pull out 50 mil, hit OK. So you can see there from that one simple plane, we've been able to create a shape really easily, right? And you can keep going with this if you wanted to. You can select this one, edit form, and we can keep going up, and we can keep going up, and you get the idea. You kind of have this control of just adding chunks to it to, until you create the shape that you want. This is a powerful approach and it allows you to get things done fairly quickly. The main thing it lets you do is kind of get a rough shape of whatever object you want to design and then you're able to add the details in afterwards just like I showed you before. And that's an important distinction here between box modeling and edge modeling. So just off the back of that last point, if I wanted to add more detail here now, it's something I'd have to go in and do manually, right? So I'd have to go and select my lines like this, come up to modify, I can insert an edge. You can see there I can click OK and I can create a kind of more defined point on the edge of that part. So if I do that same thing again, modify, insert edge, OK. You can see that we've got more definition now on the edge of that one as opposed to that curve. And we talked about this in the previous video, but you get the idea. So I'm just going to undo those changes. And now I'm going to show you edge modeling and how that's very powerful and how it differs to box modeling. So let's finish this form. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and create a new one. So let's go up to create form. We'll select the plane once again, 
I'm going to select the floor plane and I'm just going to roughly put it over here next to this one. And again, I'm going to do 50 by 50 and I'm going to make that a one by one plane as well. So edge modeling is pretty much the exact opposite of box modeling. With box modeling, generally you have to add the detail after you've created the initial form. And with edge modeling, we define the detail from the outset and then we kind of create the rest of the form around that towards the end. Both are perfectly viable approaches and it is just personal preference as to which one you like to use. Remember, as I said at the start, you actually can use both of these if you really know your way around the workspace. I'd recommend sticking to one initially, get used to it, and then you can kind of branch out. So what we did last time is we clicked on the face, we went up to edit form, and we were able to do that modification where we were adding the blocks, right? This time what we'll do instead is click on an edge. So if we click on an edge and do the same thing, so if we hold Alt and drag up, you can see what we're doing now is we're extending the edges and we're creating a cool shape. So I'm gonna do the same, I'm gonna hold Alt again and drag to the right. I'm gonna do it again and drag up and again to the right. I'm gonna do that 50 millimeters. And remember, as I said before, if you let go of Alt, you can modify an existing edge like this. And if you keep hold of Alt, it'll add more of those edges for you. So what I'm gonna do here is just create a kind of random shape. So I'm gonna come back down, uh, I'll come back down again. And then I'll come across, keep holding Alt, I'm going to bring these across. And now what I'm going to do for this front one here, I'm going to select that front edge. I'm not going to hold Alt, but what I'm going to do is just move it like I showed you there. So we can just move this so that we can line it up in the way that we want. So I'm going to move it down a little bit and across. So you can see what we've got here now is this gap here where they're not joined up. Now, what you don't want to do is kind of join them up by eye. What you actually need to do is use a tool. So at this point, what we do is come up to modify. And there's a tool here called weld vertices. If you click on that, what that'll let you do is click on two vertices and it'll bring those together. Now, when we weld these final two, you'll see that it brings them together and then it maintains that shape that we created before. So if we hit OK, zoom back out, you can now see we've got this shape that we just created using edge modeling. Now again, you can really do some cool stuff with this. So similar to what I showed you in the previous video, if we double click this outer edge, if we go up to modify again and we hold down alt and drag outwards, you can see we've extended that. So I'm gonna extend it by 15 millimeters, but then I'm also gonna grab this tool here. Remember I talked about that sort of fillet symbol on the edge, which basically it brings them in so if I click and drag that you can see that effect that it's having there on our shape so I'm going to drag it in by I'd say 0 0.65 so I'm just going to type that in and then hit enter and I'm going to do the same on the other side so if I double click come up to edit form I'm going to extend by holding alt and dragging outwards I'm going to grab that corner fillet symbol bring it down I'm going to bring it down to 0.65, hit enter, and you can see now what we're left with is a kind of cool looking shape, right? This is obviously a very simple example, but I wanted to focus and demonstrate the differences between these two approaches clearly. So similar to what I did in the previous video, I'll show you how we can convert these to solid bodies that we can actually use and edit in the regular CAD workspace. So if I click finish on this form, you'll see that we're kind of left with a very thin looking shape and there's not a lot we can really do with that and if you click the drop down here on the bodies folder you can see they're both not solid objects so we'll fix the first form to begin with as i showed you before which is relatively easy so we'll edit that by going on the timeline here and double click that'll take us back into an edit and remember all we had to do was simply double click come up to modify and fill hole and you can either have it be flat like I showed you before or you can have it uh, actually curve and maintain that nice smoothness I think I'll leave the curve there because it looks kind of cool so I'm gonna hit OK and hit finish form so that's that one you can see now that's turned to a solid body in our bodies folder so now we could go ahead and do whatever we wanted to that in our CAD workspace so as you can see with the second example, we've actually got a 
cool kind of shape, but it's actually a hollow object. Um, maybe that's what you want to keep it as. You know, you might actually want a hollow object. So if we go back into that form and modify it, again by double clicking on the timeline, if we select it by double clicking and coming up to modify and come down to thicken. Now what this will do is it'll let you add a thickness to the model. So I'm going to go ahead and add a thickness of 2.5 millimeters and hit OK. And you can see what that's done now is it's actually turned it from like that kind of flat sheet look into an actual 3D model. And if we finish the form and come back to our bodies folder up here, you can see now that we actually have two solid bodies. I thought that'd be kind of interesting to show because sometimes you might actually want to do that if you're creating some kind of vase shape or a cup or some kind of container. You won't want to do that kind of fill hole or flatten the top. You might want to keep the hollowness. So in that case, you can just add a thickness. Again, if you wanted to, you could flatten up the edges of this to make it into a solid object, similar to what we did with that first example. Hopefully this tutorial kind of brought across the differences between these two different approaches and how one can be a little more beneficial over the other in terms of getting the desired shape that you want. It really depends what you're modeling. Part of the skill behind this type of modeling is determining a good plan and following a good set of rules to achieve the shape that you want. And that's something that I'm going to cover in the next video. We'll talk about the topology of T-spline modeling and some really good practices and rules you can follow to ensure that your models are as efficient as they can be and generally following good practice. If you appreciate these videos and you want to support me directly, please head over to the website and become a member. I'd really appreciate that and I'll leave links in the description below. If membership's not for you, you can still support the channel by sharing, leaving a thumbs up and making sure you're subscribed. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.